Hello everybody, Prow here and welcome to the Bedrock Guide. Our goal for today is to set up an easy, fully automatic food source for our world. Now today we are in the new 1.16.100 update that had a ton of bug fixes and parity changes. I'm not going to go over those right now, but you can see all the changes on Mojang's website. I'll try to remember to link it in the description below. Also, if you think it'd be a, a cool idea for me to actually do beta and snapshot update videos as we kind of go through and add all of this new cool great stuff into uh, the game from the Caves and Cliffs update and more, let me know down in the comments below. Also, let's touch on the tip of the day right now. So the tip of the day from your comments in the last episode, I thought it'd be good to address now. So this is a guide series. It's aimed at helping players of all skill levels. It's been a little bit more beginner here lately, but we're going to get into more advanced stuff as we go, I promise. Uh, but all skill levels of Minecraft, and it's also meant to be entertaining, and hopefully you guys think that. Yeah, maybe? I don't know. If you do, great. Drop me a, drop me a thumbs up right now if you do. So, just know that sometimes, especially things where I mention Blue Jay, or often you'll hear me use sarcasm in a lot of different ways, trying to be funny, or put some funny infographics in. Um, I'm just trying to have fun, and keep the guide series light and fun at the same time. So hopefully that is working. Now that leads me to something I want to get done here first. I have one last piece of equipment I need to get for now, and that is a bow. Now all joking aside here, and I promise you the jokes will be coming back here shortly, there are two main routes that you can go with the bow. Your bow will typically have enchantments like power 5 to make it hit harder, unbreaking 3, flame 2 to set enemies on fire, and punch 2 so it knocks enemies backwards when you hit them. Then you have one of two enchantments left to choose from, and you can only have one of these two. You cannot put both on your bow. Now, I prefer Mending, which we don't have yet, and we haven't talked about much yet because we don't have it. But basically, as you gain experience points, it heals up your bow or other gear if it has Mending as well. And it keeps it at full durability, meaning it never, ever, ever breaks. Then you have Infinity, on the other hand, which gives you infinite regular arrows, so you only need to have one arrow, and if you have that one arrow, you have infinite shots with it. So yes, you will hear me pick on Infinity a lot, mostly because at some point I said I liked Mending better and I put it on my bow, and a lot of people like to make a big deal about it and pick on me for it, um, but I think Mending's better. So instead of just leaving it alone, I thought it'd be fun to make it a thing, so now I pick on Infinity users back. So for me, the big benefit with the mending bows are you can use tipped arrows with them, which is very, very, very powerful. And we'll go over tipped arrows at a later time, but just know that they are awesome. Whereas you aren't supposed to be able to use them with infinity. There might be a bug that lets you do that now, but infinity is not supposed to be able to use tipped arrows. Um, and even if it was able to, it would not give you infinite of them. They would still run out. Um, and then there's a, many ways to get an unlimited supply of arrows like we have on our world here with the skeleton farm. Uh, and then lastly, I have never found myself needing more than one inventory slot, so 64 arrows, worth of arrows at a time, unless I'm going out to fight the dragon, to wither, or go end raiding, at which point it's kind of easy to prepare and take a few extra ones in your shulker box or in an ender chest or an extra stack in your inventory or something like that for those specific things. Otherwise, I usually have to stop by my arrow chest every once in a while, maybe once every three or four trips to top it off. So it's not as big of a hindrance as most of you guys think, especially if you got good aim like me. So I'm, I'm working on my enchants here and I just want to show you guys what I like to do with infinity bows. Like I got this one right here. It's got a breaking three, flame one, punch one, infinity one, and power three. Um, this is the best use I can find for infinity bows. First, you throw it on the ground. Then you take a flint and steel and you burn it. That's what I do with infinity bows. And before we forget, Let's drop off Blue Jay's winnings. He won one, two, three, and four stacks of eggs. I think I got off easy on that one. I think it's about time we probably raise the stakes on this again, though. Ooh, there's a dog back there. Why do I say, ooh, there's a dog back there? And I look at, like, a whole bunch of bows I threw on the ground. Yes, I know. You can use your bows as fuel. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Why? <laughs> so why do we care about the dog? So anytime you find a wolf... If you have bones, you can feed the bones to the wolf and eventually, oh, look at him. Oh, look at this cute wolf guy. Here you go. No, you want more? Yeah, another, another. Why are you so hungry? There he goes. He becomes your friend. And when he becomes your friend, you can tell him to sit. You can tell him to stay. And if anything attacks, ooh, we can have more friends. Hold on, let's get more friends. More friends. Ooh. He liked me already. 
Woohoo! Awesome. So now we have two friends with us. And anytime something attacks you, I don't think there's anything around here to attack me. But anytime something attacks you, these guys come to your aid and they will defend you. Man's best friend right here. We're gonna take them back to the base and set them down somewhere so they don't get lost. Because I don't I don't want them to die. Also, don't worry about leaving the wolves behind. If you get too far away, they'll teleport to you. Just make sure you don't do it in an unsafe place, like really high up in the air or in the nether, because if you do, they'll probably die. Now, the automatic food source that I'm talking about today is a super easy one to do in the early game, and it is a automatic chicken cooker with egg capability. So I'm gonna craft up a couple of parts we need now, and we'll go over them a little bit later. But I need to get a glowstone, which I get by putting in four glowstone dust, and I need to convert that to a redstone lamp, what you do with the glowstone plus four pieces of redstone around it. Um, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven torches. And we're gonna change uh, some of those into redstone comparators, which takes three torches, one quartz, and three, reg three regular stones. So we will go ahead and make a couple of those. Um, you'll need a lever as well, which I already have here. Uh, you'll need several hoppers. Uh, you need at least one, two, three, you need at least three hoppers, uh, but I'm gonna get more because I may do more chests and at least a set of double chests, if not more than that, depending on how much you want this thing to be able to hold. And then also you're gonna need some chickens, um, which when we get to that point, I'll show you guys how to get those if you don't already have them, or I guess really more of how to get them into the system. So let's go ahead and let's get started. And forgot a couple ingredients here. We also need an observer, just one and we need a dispenser which the the observer by the way that took uh six cobblestone two redstone and one quartz and the dispenser takes seven cobblestone one redstone and one bow now uh, what i did just to be safe is i took my like good bow out of my inventory because i last thing i want is for it to use up my good bow in some like crazy way me misclicking and being dumb so yeah now that we got those things, that should be all we need to get this made. If not, we'll, we'll grab our extra supplies. And as we go through in building this, I'm going to explain to you guys exactly how and why it all works together. Now, for my design here, I'm actually going to go up three blocks from the ground because I have a really cool, like, design for what the little, like, structure it's going to hold this is. And you guys will see that because I'll do that at the end. But we're going to go ahead and go one, two, three, just like that. And then I'm gonna place down my first double chest. Now for our one that we're doing here, this thing is gonna be three double chests high. So one, two, three, cause I really want the extra storage more than anything. And then we're gonna go ahead and get some hoppers, run some hoppers into the back. Those hoppers, we're gonna face right in the back here. It's kind of hard to do from this angle, but I can, I think I can pull it off. We're gonna click here. So the hoppers are going on the right side. And we want them to face forward into the chests like that. So now you see all three of them are facing forward and we're gonna actually face another one into the back of this guy right here. So that's gonna go right there, just like that. And then we're gonna take our dispenser and our dispenser is going to face this way. And we are going to have one last hopper going into the side of the dispenser, just like that. Now is where we get to a lot of the redstone components. Let me see. Let me take a moment here. Can I get this out here? Need I need a block right here and a temporary block or that's a temporary block. This is a permanent block. And now we're going to use our comparator. So what our comparator is going to do first comparator here is it's going to read this hopper anytime there is an item in this hopper this comparator can tell that okay so like if i go through and it's going to the hopper well the hopper's of course going to transfer all the items over into the dispenser here but you guys will be able to at least briefly see that when i do this that comparator is turned on when i take all the items out the comparator is turned off now there's a lot more to comparators that we will eventually get to oh i just realized that actually everything's moved this way all the way down into here um and then also what i want to do is I want to use, I want to knock that up for just a brief moment because I do want to use spruce because this is going to be our decorative block and I want to make sure that we have spruce everywhere possible. 
So it doesn't matter for this particular thing, any other function of the comparator. So we're not going to go over the other functions right now. We'll place a temporary block right here because while holding the duck button, I want to put a solid block right here. So you can't use glass. You can't use a slab. It needs to be what the game considers to be a solid block, which is what we did. And then I'm going to put a torch on the side of that. So now anytime I have something in the comparator, let's just put a few items in there. That turns on and that turns off. When this runs out of items, that turns off and this turns on, which is exactly what we need. And then last but not least, we need an observer. I always forget which way is the right way for this thing to face, to do the face. Nope, I guess it's wrong. Let's line this back up. And then this is gonna be kind of tricky to do based on the angle, because the observer is very finicky when it comes to placing. But if we get right here and face the observer, Perfect. You see the arrow on it is facing in this direction, meaning that the redstone goes that way and the face is looking at the, um, what you call it, the torch. So now what should happen, this is a dispenser, right? Yeah, what should happen is if I put some items in here, they're still going to go through, but you see, you heard this, you hear it, you hear it click. It clicks when this turns on, it clicks when this turns off, which means that clicking is sending a redstone signal to this dispenser and that click sound is actually the dispenser trying to dispense stuff. Unfortunately for now, it was unable to do that because it got sucked up by the hopper below it first before it could actually spit it out, which is fine because we have a fix for that. I'd like to point out really quick a difference in this design. If you've ever made a chicken cooker before, odds are if you're still using it in your world, it's probably actually broken and you don't know it. Because if you have the old design where the hopper sits right on top of the dispenser right here and sends the eggs down, which we'll explain that part later. But if you've done one of these before, you probably have it set up that way because it's slightly thinner. The problem is, is every single time it goes to cook one of your chickens, um, like one of them grows up to get them into the lava that we'll be using here in a little bit to cook it. Actually, all the baby chickens end up getting cooked as well. So it's it's kind of a really big problem. So I have solved that through a trick I learned from Rogue Fox. I'll try to remember to link his, um, his channel in the description box below. He's really great at redstone and farms and stuff like that. Was that you do not do you do not put a a transparent block like a hopper facing down into this you'll have some type of a solid block right there and that'll prevent that from happening so you may want to modify your current chicken farms if you have one so now i'm going to go ahead and remove that block because i don't need it anymore and i'm going to put a block right here on the side of this chest if i can oops right there just like that and then we are going to put a block right here that's beside the hopper under the dispenser and right here which is on that second down um, hopper or just kind of down between these two guys now we're gonna take our comparator and we're gonna place the comparator right here and then we're gonna take our switch our lever I always call it a switch our lever and put it there so what are we doing with this so if I turn this lever on it turns this comparator on the comparator gets power from this block right here the switch the lever powers the block the observer sees not the observer the comparator sees that this block is powered it's then sending power to this block this block right here has power if i have a piece of redstone dust i can show you that that is lit up okay now anytime a block has power beside a hopper it locks the hopper which my texture pack shows that this hopper right here has red on it right now in my texture pack it is locked that means it will not suck up items so watch what happens now when i go to this and i throw stone in it see it got shot out okay now you saw it only shot out one that's because we're using this observer um, and it's how that circuit works but the way the chicken farm is going to work is it's going to actually pop eggs in more like this chicken lays an egg chicken lays an egg chicken lays an egg chicken lays an egg right see it keeps shooting them out and they're going getting sucked into there but you see the chickens will lay eggs and it'll keep popping them out which is exactly what we want so if we want chickens to be hatched, we'll have this guy right here flipped down, uh, up for on and or down for on. And if we don't want chickens, we want eggs. We'll flip it the other way to turn this off. That way the eggs can get sucked in. So it's a pretty awesome little thing. And we're going to add in an indicator light too. That's what the redstone lamp is for. We're just going to put that right there. And then now if I want chicken, chicken is on. If I want eggs, eggs is off. It's that easy. So this is actually all the redstone for this farm 
But now it's time for the fun part. The fun part is, is we need to actually get some chickens in here. So I'm going to go ahead and get a couple of additional supplies, just some glass mainly, and then we'll build the chicken cage part. Okay, so we're working on two parts here. One part's going to be where we're cooking the chicken, and the other part's going to be where the chickens are going to go. Now, I'm going to do things that if you do not have fire tick turned off, you cannot do because we're going to have lava pretty close to wood, and that'll burn. So you may want to use stone if you have fire tick turned on. What we're going to do, we're going to place a block right there, just like that, and one right here, just like this. And then I'm going to do a couple on this side, one here and one here. And we're actually going to leave that one open like that for now. We're not going to put another one right there. And then we're going to take a half slab, put it right here. Um, we're going to put a spruce wood plank right there as well. And then I'm going to take some glass. I always like to use white stained glass. We're going to use a piece right here, piece right here, and a piece right here just like this. That way we can kind of see everything. And actually, you know what? I don't, I don't think, no, we don't want one right here, actually. Sorry, that's where our lava's going to go. Uh, we're going to put another one right here. And then we actually, we can put the lava in and we can cover it up. So we're going to put a piece of lava right here. A piece of lava. <laughs> we put lava right there. And then we can go ahead and close that off. We don't want to fall into it, um, but we want it there because it's glowing and it's nice and pretty. And then before I explain how this part works, let's build up our area where our chickens are going to go because our chickens are going to go in here. So we're going to put a block right here. You can get rid of that bottom one if you like to. Put a block right here. And then we are also going to, one more time, block, 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 and block. Just like that. Because our chickens are going to go down here. But we're going to give ourselves a little something special before we bring the chickens up. Just in case we happen to fall inside. And just to make this a little bit easier. So two things here. These are really important to do. Number one. Take a ladder, put it right here because it's going to allow you to climb out. Although we're not actually going to end up using it for that reason, but technically it lets you do that. Um, in the Java edition, putting a ladder inside of here actually stops there from being collisions between the chickens. It actually reduces lag. I really, I don't think that's the case in Bedrock edition. If, if it is, you guys can maybe let me know down in the description, those that may know that. But even if it's not, it could at some point, right? So we're going to put it in there just because there's no reason not to. And we're going to put a trap door right here. Now, this is the important part, the trap door. The trap door keeps you from falling in, first of all, when you're not using it and you're not going down there for any reason. B, if you do fall in, you can always just click the trap door, jump, and it'll get you right out with, with or without the ladder. It'll work fine. Now, though, what we really need to do is we need to get chickens in here. Before we do that, I'm going to place down a temporary block here, temporary block here. And then I think, yeah, we're gonna do a couple more just like that. And I'm gonna put a couple back here just so I can scoot back a little bit further because we're gonna actually be luring some chickens down here. And we're gonna make a simple like staircase owl, nothing special, but just something that's gonna help us get up here with the chickens. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I already kind of got a staircase here. I might have to, I guess, tear that down. We're gonna get this staircase put in. And we're going to bring some seeds with us over to our chicken area. And this is when the chaos is about to happen. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this. And I'm going to put the seeds in my hand. And all these guys, which is quite a lot of them, are going to follow me. And I probably don't really even need all of them, but it's fine. It's going to be okay. So we're going to just kind of walk and get all these guys to follow us over. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to go up the steps here. And for the most part, a, a bunch of them should probably follow us. I'm sure we'll have to do this a few times. But we're gonna, we're gonna get up here, get a few of them coming up like this. Yep, 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 come on. I'm gonna jump on the other side right here. And what'll happen is these guys, they think they can walk on, uh oh, that ladder is messing us up. We have to get rid of that. Now that the ladder's gone, now <laughs> they'll drop all the way in. I feel like that didn't used to happen, but it's, it's happening now, which is fine. This guy's in the way, let's move him. Come on, come on. Oh, he got across. That's fine. We can push him. We can push him back. And yeah, we're just going to do this and get a whole bunch of the chickens in here. But keep in mind, the more you get in, the more lag you're going to create. So if you're on a single player world, probably not too big of a deal. If you're playing on a multiplayer world, the more players you have, the less chickens you probably want to use. On the low side, say maybe 10. On the high side, maybe about 30 um, if you're on a single player world. And we'll be somewhere probably right in the middle by the time I get all the ones that we need in there. But also, the more chickens you have, the more chicken you get faster. Now we got all the chickens in. We can close this up. 
and we're good to go we don't need to do anything else if you don't have a lot of chickens like chickens like i did just go ahead and get some seeds and breed them while they're in there that's fine that works too or take a bunch of eggs and throw the eggs in there either way works works okay and now you can see that we have this thing kind of all set up and ready to go for the most part we can tear down all these extra blocks we did perfect technically we can get rid of these ones too i don't know if i'll use them decoratively or not but for now i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of them because i don't need them um, i may add some back depending on how we decorate this thing because i have a plan for it but i don't know what all the exact details of that plan are get rid of this guy let's get rid of this guy and this guy and this guy and now you can see right now our our thing is turned off we're actually we're already getting eggs into it and if I turn it on, we should see this thing start to dispense some eggs out shortly. And eventually, we'll get a baby chick. And there he is. It didn't take long. Like the third egg that popped through, we got a baby chick in there. Um, this is looking this is looking quite good. I could even... Ow. I could even see myself for aesthetic purposes, maybe even getting rid of that trap door and putting like a, a solid block on top of it. I don't think I'm ever going to need to mess with these guys again. But now that we got this thing functional, and you guys know how the whole thing works top to bottom... We can go ahead and we can get the aesthetics built up. Now, I'm not I'm not physically going to do that right now, like in the real world, because it's getting late and I'm going to go to bed. But I'm probably either going to do it during a live stream or just sometime during the day where maybe I can do a time lapse for it. So we'll see. We'll see how it works out. I'll let you guys know in just a few seconds, one way or the other. Also, just to explain actually how the chicken part works. So these chickens, when they're babies, you can see, although it looks like their heads are in the lava, their hitbox actually is not. It's below the lava level. And then what happens is when one of these chickens actually goes to the point where it grows up into a full full size like regular chicken, an adult chicken, he then reaches up into the lava. The lava burns him. He cooks he, or he dies. He gets cooked. And his drops go into here and go down to here. We'll get his feathers and we'll get cooked chicken from it because he died while he was on fire. And remember how I said I was going to time lapse this? Yeah, so I do my time lapses on my phone and I forgot to turn off the HUD. And also, I forgot to turn on these like screen stay on function, so that time lapse didn't didn't happen. Uh, but it was fine. I did a lot of uh, did a lot building here, and there is our chicken farm. It is all done, and it is all decorated. And overall, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I saw I needed some inspiration, so I saw a video by Grian of a functional chicken coop. So I used a couple aspects of that I liked, such as the um, like the wood post like holding it up above the ground. I thought was kind of neat um, These little trapdoor bits here and like the general shape to the roof <sighs> Roofs are not my strong point. They're not even like my like middle point. They're not, I'm not very good at roofs, but That's one of the points of the series right is you guys got to work on things and do things that you're not a hundred percent Comfortable with doing to get better at them. So I challenge all of you right now that say I'm not good at building I'm terrible. I can't build anything do it build right now because eventually you're gonna get good at it so like this this kind of jacked up roof that i got going on it's fine i'm gonna i'm gonna fix it i'm gonna or not fix this one but i'm gonna try again on the next build that i do and try again on the next build after that until i get really really good at building roofs um we got a awesome little area here where we got some free range chickens like running around this dude's gonna get out when i like hop in so i guess i'm just gonna do this for right now uh but yeah we're doing some details here we got some hanging lanterns to keep the light level in here good and i wanted to give it that chicken coop kind of feel for it being a actual chicken farm and then we have access to our chests here remember we can switch between egg mode and chicken mode i actually think i'm gonna turn on egg mode because i used all my eggs making all those chickens and we got a decent amount of chicken in there and a little bit of details here and there. We got some some windows here fence I did not plan for how to get out of something like this at all Um, There we go <laughs> oh, Maybe I should put a ladder down or something, uh, but yeah everything looks great I'm super happy like overall with how this project turned out I hope you guys got a lot of out, a lot out of like actually making a chicken cooker and a lot out of the like physical design of like how the thing looks as well if you did, please leave me a, a like and a comment and let me know. Um, also, uh, I don't think we'll be doing resource roulette. Uh, me and Blue Jay are not synced up again, but that's okay. We'll get back to it pretty soon here. Holidays are coming up, so it's kind of to be expected. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for hanging out. Click that like button. Click the subscribe button. Drop me comments that you want for the tip of the day. We hit that earlier in the episode. And make sure to keep leaving those uh, 
I guess, suggestions for the resource roulette. That way I can get more amazing things from Blue Jay. Thanks again, guys. Goodbye.